viewers, and welcome back to Shining Force Sword of Hajia. Um, this time, we are basically going to be walking up a long outdoor map, as is customary in the Shining Force games. Every, every single one needs at least some very lengthy outdoor maps. <laughs> Just the style. Uh, so, settle in for a, a long battle. Oh man, the scavenger enemy, I'm guessing we're not going to be seeing them too much longer because even the mage is not taking damage from them anymore. We outgrew them so fast. This is like, what, battle three? They're already old moves. A counter attack? <laughs> Very exciting. I feel like counter attacks seem to be happening slightly more than I remember as a kid, so I wonder if the remake, like the, the Shining Force, the, the Sega CD version, which we are currently emulating, um, which was the remake, I wonder if that like tweaked the mechanics to kind of bring that in more. Because they were somewhat rare in the game that I played as a kid. <laughs> to, rare to the point of being sort of pointless. Maybe I'll just have her like smack this dude. <laughs> Because I kind of want the kill to be gotten by one of our weaker characters. Uh, let's have Slade show us what he's made of. <laughs> he's really short. Oh, I think I remember reading at some point that he might actually supposed to be a be he may be supposed to be a dwarf, even though the game never actually says this. Because this was the case in Shining Force 1, too, where our party, like, actually had a wide variety of different, like, fantasy races, but it, it, that information was not contained anywhere in the game, so until I, like, read a guide about it as an adult, I didn't know that. That might be the case here, too, where, like... Because he looks a little bit like the build for Lo from the original game, who was also a dwarf. Um, yeah, I kind of want to save this guy for a loop, just so we can maybe get a level. I'm going to slay this too. That could, that could make sense. And we do, we will be meeting, um, like, May is, um, like a dog person for some reason. That is also only level 3, but he's a little tougher than Luke, so I think he can get X more easily. Hopefully this will level Luke up. Very good. I don't want uh, anyone to fall behind as we're in the game. Um, yeah, so we'll meet like some like animal people, which we also saw in Shining Force 1, if I remember correctly. Um, obviously we have our centaurs that we have in every game. Um, I don't know if we have anybody who's half giant like Gong was in the first game. Um, but yeah, we have a pretty good variety. It's funny, Shining Force 2 cut back on the lot, because we had elves in that game, and we had centaurs and we had Peter the Phoenix, but we didn't have any of the, like, um, the, like, dog people, or uh, anyone who was, like, listed as a dwarf or anything. We met dwarves in our, the course of our adventures, but I don't think we recruited any as party members. Um, so we had slightly more fantasy races in the games before that. Great, that's great. Although that game did introduce weird shit like a vampire for some reason, and it was like never, that was never explained in any meaningful way, and never made sense. <laughs> Let's not talk about Shining Force 2, that game, that game had some weird things. <laughs> uh, but yeah, this, this might be our, filling out our party. will be a bottleneck. Maybe I should have walked around, but like, I feel very impatient and don't want to do that. <laughs> Basically, I'm like, let's just get through the level. <laughs> I don't want to wait. We're actually making our way. Slade is still sleeping. He... Ah, these freaking bats. They're annoying. It's actually been, it's been quite a long time since I played Sword of Asia. Not as long as for uh, Shining Force 1, because like I said, I played it on 3DS, but that was um, more than five years ago, so I don't totally remember like the order of the characters we recruited and everything. Um, yes, Luke, might as well use a heal, just get some extra X. Healing is just, you know, it's just bonus X every time. So it just catching some Z's. <laughs> oh, this map is... It's, 
so it's so large and so much of it is not needed at all. It's gonna take so long to walk through this bit. Maybe it would have been fast to go around, but going around would be so far. <laughs> What a, this level isn't that exciting. Wow, when Slade goes to sleep, he really goes to sleep. He is. Oh, oh I can't wait for Natasha to get her level 2 spells so we can attack multiple enemies. It's so exciting. can just cast and call down fire from the heavens to destroy our enemies. <laughs> it's so delightful. Nice loop can finish up this dwarf hopefully. Very good. And I want to make sure he doesn't fall behind because he was like just a little behind the others at first. So keep an eye on that. Uh, and he can come in and attack these dragon meat. Slade, man, <laughs> maybe I just, I, I like never keep in my final party, so I'm not that bothered. Um, it will be a while before we get our other healer, though, to be fair. Um, we will eventually recruit an additional healer, who is by far, like, overwhelmingly the best healer in the game. She's, as, as usual, the best healer is the one who gets aura. <laughs> so, at that point, there won't be any need for anyone else. Very good, Natasha. Just keep leveling her up so we can get those high level spells. Fucking finally, Slade. God. I mean, I guess at least he's not gonna fall that far behind because we're all stuck in these trees, so. I think I mentioned this in the previous LP, but, um, and we'll have to see whether this is still true with the upgraded graphics, but in the original game, I personally prefer the mage sprite to the promoted wizard sprite. I think the, the mage sprite with a little, like, pointy Gandalf hat and stuff, and the cape looks stylish. The mage sprite just was kind of more generic. I didn't like it as much. It's a little side note to look forward to, I guess. My fashion, my video game fashion opinions. <laughs> In general, I, I do think that there is a tendency in the Shining Force games for the promoted sprites to not always look as good, and I think part of it is because they get more complicated and detailed, and sometimes that makes them just look a bit too busy. Um, whereas the, like, the slightly more simple unpromoted sprites can can have a more strong impact. Wow, I heard just one shot at that guy with a double attack. <laughs> Very slowly making our way through this forest. This is good though, making sure Ben doesn't fall behind. Slade, bringing up the rear. Um, normally I would be more concerned that he's like a level behind everyone else, but again, I am not really seeing him as a permanent party member, so I don't care as much. It's not, it doesn't matter as much. Uh, I, I just never really miss him. He's like. We get a better healer later, and he's like not really good as an attacker, so it's one of those things where it kind of feels like, eh, what's his purpose in the party, really? You know, he's, he's an example of, like, Luke doesn't have, he's just an off healer, you know, he has the healing and he can attack, but he's good as an attacker, and the healing is like a nice little bonus, because you don't necessarily need tons and tons of healing always, whereas Slade is like, he's good as a healer and he can attack a little, but often we don't need that much healing, and his attack is not good, so... He just isn't as useful. And I just don't find him that interesting either. Like, I feel like as a character, he's kind of just there. Graham is a little more fun. <laughs> he's, like, he's like the thief that steals the sword and then he regrets it and joins us. Where Slave is just like, here. Like, he's like, oh, his village is being threatened or something and then he doesn't want to help us, but then he's like, I will help you. And then here he is. <laughs> so it's not like an in-depth portrait. I mean, I guess I tend to gravitate towards the characters that are a little more quirky. Because the rest of our party is even more quirky. <laughs> Just standing here 
of this bottleneck. <laughs> Gradually. Although all the enemies came to us, so I guess it was perfectly efficient. <laughs> it kind of served as a choke point to let us manage them. It wasn't so bad. Oh yeah, this guy has a blades. I guess he's like a fire lizard. You know, you can cast fire. He's like, um... He's like a Lizofo from Zelda because uh, they, <laughs> they like spit fire at you in some game. Jeez, I, I wanted John to weaken that. I didn't expect her to actually kill it in a double attack. Double attacks seem to be happening more than the game I played as a kid too. Maybe, maybe they really did tweak the end. That's possible. Now we have only the Ion Knight left. This was a short battle. I mean, I guess I'll get a little longer as we get later in the game. <laughs> One would expect that. Just want to make sure we get some healing from Slade so we can at least get something. Poor Slade. It's hard to keep them up with only healing from X because they only get 10, you know? Whereas for the healers that get things like, you know, boost or aura, you get a lot of experience points for using them. But yeah, I would actually say, I feel like you... I'm trying to remember the numbers that you get when the party splits, how many people are actually in, actually in each half. Because I feel like maybe in this game, you end up using a wider variety of characters just because, like, you have two parties. But I'm trying to remember if they actually have a full party in each one, or if, like, if they actually both get 12 characters, or if it's, like, you're using a smaller party, but you only have- you basically- it's- the force is literally split in half, and then you only get to use six in each one. I don't actually remember because it's just- it's been years since I played this game. But uh, we'll discover that together. That's not until later though. This is we're still in book one. Uh, yeah, I catch him getting Ben up to level five is really good, so we can get him to X. Man, he didn't do a lot of damage there. I don't want to actually kill, but I do want to weaken this guy. Oh man, that was that was, that was close. So we can now get to kill the whoever we want, not the one who level 6 doesn't need it. Uh, ben is a good choice, I think. He, you know, I, I don't want the main character to be mine, obviously. We have to use him every mission. Very good. This is actually kind of true for Natasha, too, although you don't know that in the start of the game, obviously. Egress is a hint, I guess, but uh, we will have to use her in quite a few missions as well during the party split, so we'll want her to be good. We must be careful, or innocent people will suffer. Ben, I want you to lead the group to the cliffs. <laughs> it's also not explained why Ben is the leader. They just pick him. They're like, oh, you should lead everybody now. For no real reason. Um, We're only 13 minutes in, so let's just carry on. <laughs> that was a short battle. There he is. I gotta say, I like the graphical effect, like the parallax background there, where we can kind of see the distant ground below the cliffs. That looks very cool. We finally caught up to Graham. Oh no! Cypress army? How did they break through our defenses? I've been waiting for you, Graham. In this tiny house. <laughs> Sorry, the graphic of the... the the archer emerging from this major house is kind of funny. Dark Mage has been eagerly awaiting your return. I like that they just call themselves their character class. <laughs> Do you have the Sword of Haja? I also like that that's highlighted in yellow text in case the player like didn't know it was important somehow. <laughs> yes, it's right here, but the Cypress army is right behind me. What? The audacity! We'll take care of them here and now. A lot of new enemies in this battle. Hurry, we must reach Graham! Alright, so let's check out our map. This may take two, this may be four cards two episodes just because like, we only have 15 minutes, and this is a long map. Oh, I actually remember this map. Yeah, I remember playing on this map. <laughs> it's familiar to me. Um, because you kind of take a winding path, and there are flying enemies. Oh, this, this graphical effect looks really cool. I gotta say, I like it a lot. Uh, in addition to the huge bats, we have some new enemies like the Incubus that can cast Blaze. boss is going to be the Death Archer. It's funny, I maybe I'm confusing this with another map, because I thought there were Pegasus Knights in this, 
else, but maybe I'm thinking of something else. But I do recognize the general shape of this map. It's actually familiar to me. And here's Graham, who is carrying with him the Sword of Magia. Uh, let's kick things right off. Yeah, wow, this is like, it's trippy how I'm like, whoa, I, this is so familiar to me, I know this. When I didn't remember it prior to seeing it, like seeing the map shape of retrieved some <laughs> Yeah, this battle tends to be a little slower just because we have to kind of walk around the map, but I actually like it more than most outdoor maps because a lot of the outdoor maps are just like a big open field that just takes ages to walk across. I feel like this map, you also have to walk across a long distance, but there's more interest to it, right? Like, you're kind of fighting different groups of enemies at different points, and when you're on the bridge, you have to be careful about getting surrounded by flying enemies, you know, so you kind of you have different stuff going on at different parts of the map, rather than what often happens with the outdoor maps where you fight a whole bunch of enemies, then you just do nothing for several turns when you walk, then you fight more, which, you know, it's a little laggy in the middle. This is a little more active. Okay. Uh, got a lot of, a lot of people to fight here. <laughs> Quite a while. Right now. But look at it, it looks so nice. I, I think the shading on like the cliffs is really cool. It definitely evokes us being in this like, you know, shadowed by the, the mountains rising around us. Overall, I think the design is nice. It's, it's very stylish. Very good. Yeah, I feel like chapter one of this game basically is, yeah, Graham flees, like the second time, because he has to go deliver the Sword of Kaja to the Merc Mage, as we were told. Um, but yeah, the first chapter of this game is basically like, the Sword of Kaja is stolen and we have to scramble to recover it, and then like, we get drawn deeper into like, the conflict against Ion and stuff, and, you know, kind of like... We, you know, our, our party members start out as just the youths who were kind of left behind to guard the castle, and then they lose the sword and have to find it quickly, but then they kind of get drawn deeper into the larger, like, battle going on. This is also, you know, the general Shining Forge tradition, where in each game some reason is found for why um, this band of inexperienced youths becomes the Shining Forge instead of our experienced warriors, and in every game there's been a different reason. Shining Forge 1, the Guardian Army is wiped out by Runefest, and um, the the main characters that we start with were the only survivors because they were off doing like a minor little mission at a different place, so that's why they become the Shining Force. In Shining Force 2, we were like a peaceful town that I guess, yeah, well that in that case also our town is wiped out by an army and we're the only survivors, so again, and I guess the rest of the knights that survive have to stay behind to guard the castle, so we leave. That one is less clear. <laughs> it's a little stupider. But um, in, Gaiden, in the first Gaiden game, uh, once again, the Guardian army goes Cyprus and is entirely wiped out. They have an ongoing problem with being entirely wiped out. That happens multiple times. Poor Guardiana, really. They like their whole army is wiped out. They form a new one. They survive. Seventeen years later, like you know, everything is going well, and then their entire army is wiped out again. <laughs> And then in this game, once again, like, they just get attacked and, like, lose so many people. They, they're just, like, this unending tragedy. Genius. I never thought about that as a kid. <laughs> um, but anyway, in that game, in Guide 1, you know, the army is wiped out. And that's why we have to recruit a bunch of people, including people in the Cypress Resistance. And then in this game, the Cypress army is off fighting some major battle, and we're, like, this sort of ragtag group that's doing this separate mission. And then, as you've probably guessed by now, the army gets wiped out and we have to take over. <laughs> Some of them actually survive and we recruit them. Um, I will say, in the original game, it was less obvious how many we recruit, because like I said in the first episode, in the opening cutscene, all of the sprites were just like sprites from the different classes, so like archer, uh, knight, you know, like priest, and, and so you couldn't tell which of them were ac actually official characters and which were not. Whereas in this game, they're all generic sprites, except for like four of them that clearly have unique sprites. So I was like, oh, I guess we'll be meeting them again then. <laughs> but, um, oh nice, at least Slade is not completely behind. He's still behind, just not as bad. 
but um, but yeah, it's a little more obvious in this game. But some of them we will actually be later. And you probably recognize one of them, the bird, the bird fighter, Claude. Yeah, he is in this game as well. I mentioned that in the previous game, but um, for me, I first encountered this character in this game. Um, and I used them in that game too. Bird, bird characters are A, they're cool, and B, they're really useful because they can travel over terrain. So I used them again. Uh, we'll also meet Gaian again, who we saw at the opening cutscene, and another character who was from the previous game and in this game. Um, if you remember Randolph the Centaur, he was like one of the... I think he was actually one of like the Cypress Knights who like, you know, was like the the new king, and like clearly something is, I don't know if he was a new king, I thought that he murdered the old king, but maybe he just went nuts, and that, that was, it's unclear. But um, like, the king has gone mad, and he decided to like, side with Prince Nick instead. He also appears in this game. Um, and we will meet another character named Sarah, who uh, is like a warrior who's traveling with him, who we also saw in the opening cutscene. She's the, the other team. And obviously, eventually, we'll see Prince Nick again. Yeah, and we have Mayfair sort of acting as our, our guide. <laughs> you know, I got Mayfair up to like level 18 promoted in the last game, and she was absurdly powerful. So I'm kind of like, Mayfair, why are you just being our like advisor instead of marching into battle with us? You could shred all of these enemies. <laughs> but, uh... but yeah, in this game, she's just the advisor. That way she can cast more spells because she has eight blades, right? So this way she can do more over the course of the battle. Mm. This will either be a super long episode or if it's going to be. the awkward point of the map because we kind of we have these two flying enemies and then the rest are on like a little staircase basically which acts as a choke point are just freaking bad it's so annoying um so it's hard to bring all of our and our forces we're gonna have him actually start on this bat so that's are a lot more annoying to kill the Iron Knight just so he can keep buffing up his axe a little, you know, just so he doesn't fall behind. And we can save his heals for a little later in the fight. There we go. If he just heals someone, I think that should be enough to, to get him his next level pretty much. I don't know why this guy's deck Dawn, the character he definitely can't damage. <laughs> Our highest level character. Um... He's the only one who can attack his bat right now, so it's disadvantage. Any of our other friends can finish off the other bat. Okay. Hopefully we'll be able to upgrade some weapons soon. Get some, some strong I can finish off this bat. Get some more people up to level 6, hopefully. It's funny, you can see his sprite in this game has like weird pointy shoes that look like they're roughly metal. I feel like they just had round shoes that were just brown in the game here for here. It's sort of weird looking. He's wearing, he's wearing like not really well matching armor. <laughs> Oh no, Slade, you're in danger. And he fell asleep. Slade, this happened in the last battle too, and frankly, I am disappointed in your performance. I hate spending too much time taking taking some naps, you know, not enough time contributing to the fight. <sighs> Let's have her finish up the bat, just so it doesn't come out. 
Also, his defenses are not good. He doesn't have a lot of HP. He can die really quick. So, he's a little difficult to use sometimes. Get this guy. I feel like compared to... Because the AI is particularly different also from like the game gear games. Um, I feel like in this map, more of the enemies aggroed to us earlier in the map. Because I feel like when the... I originally played as a kid... The bats and everything aggroed you more like at the bridge. So you were kind of like, had a lot of enemies to fight there. Whereas here, they should have been here. There we go. Slade is asleep still. Side. Still have some more enemies to fight, but. Yeah, it kind of ended up that all the enemies kind of swarmed us here. <laughs> so we wanted those. But there's still some to handle the rest of the map. So you know, it's not. It's not completely empty. So I think the map, unlike a lot of the outdoor maps, this one you at least have something to do in the middle part, which is fight those guys, basically. And we have to deal with these dwarves before we get over the bridge. And we have these guys over here when we're starting to approach the boss. Oh, it would be great if Slave could wake up, because we could actually throw some heal in some people would take taken chip. Yeah, I'll probably just have this one run over, because I feel like otherwise we'll start the next episode and this battle will take like less than 10 minutes to finish up, and then, you know, well, at least if I'm in book, we'll kind of have a lot of, you know, the times will keep ending awkwardly in the middle of the battles. So I might as well just have this one run over a little. It's a slightly longer than that. And we also, you know, finished it, we're the last one so early that we started it early, so. If we'd started this one at the start of the video, it, <laughs> it actually would, like, barely take 20 minutes. <laughs> it's early game. I do also think that the Gaiden games, I think the maps are not quite as long as they are for the, uh, for Shiny Force 2 in particular, the maps are really long. But even for Shiny Force 1, I think they're a little shorter. Uh, a little longer, rather, compared to these. Which, maybe they, they did that on, I would assume they did that on purpose because it was for a handheld system, so it's like, this way you can like, you know, it's easier to play on the go because it's not, you know, you don't have to sit down for like an hour to play the whole map. You can just blast through it in like 20 minutes. Always an important consideration for portable games. I'd actually say, even though I, like I played console games as a kid, but I probably, over the course of my life, have spent far more time playing handheld games, just because, like, we had consoles when I was a kid, um, we, but the last console I actually owned as a child was the N64, and after that, I did not get a new con another console until I was in college, and I bought a used PS2 way after the PS2 had actually come out. It was, like, very old at that point. I think, like, the PS4 might have been out by that Um... And that I bought used, and then later I got a used Wii, also at, way after it came out, uh, to play some older console games. But prior to that, I had all the it all But now, the Switch, which I have now, is the, the first console that I've owned, that I bought like at, when it was new. Like I didn't buy it at launch because um, there were shortages of the Switch at launch because it sold out so quickly, so I couldn't find one for a while. But I bought it like within a year of its launch. Um, and that was the first console where that was true since the N64 as a child. And obviously the Switch is also like, it's a console, but you can also play it in handheld mode. And I actually spend, I've probably spent more time playing it in handheld mode just because I really like handheld gaming. So I, I tend more towards the handheld. get through Shining Force Certipasia, which I, much like the first Gaiden game, I that should not take all that long because it is it is much shorter than the main series games. Um, I'm just checking if anything else is Use up this X. This will just pop off again. Um, but yeah, it probably will not really take all that long to get through. Because if each battle can fit into like half an hour or less, 
and I think there's only like maybe 20 battles, 20, 22. Um, so that's really not that big of a playtime overall. Uh, after that, I want to do Shiny Force Final Conflict, which was the final Gaiden game, but it is actually not really connected to the other Gaiden games. It's instead set like after, it's like between Shiny Force 1 and Gaiden 1, um, to I guess. <laughs> Basically, it seems like it's there just to explain what happened to Max, even though <laughs> I feel like, having read a brief plot summary of it, I feel like it really only raises more questions than the guess of Bottle. <laughs> but, um, but I do want to play it. Uh, and then that will, and then after that, I don't know how long that one is, but I don't think it's very long. Um, I'm guessing it's kind of similar to probably. Um, there is a Shiny Force 3, um, and that game, I actually have to think more about that because from what I have discovered from some googling, um, that one has an interesting history where Shiny Force 3 had three parts. Only the first part was translated into English and brought to the US, and because of that, the English version actually has a fairly different ending apparently, because Obviously, if you're not bringing parts 2 and 3, then the first one would just end on a cliffhanger that would never be resolved. So apparently they changed a bunch of stuff to, like, give it an actual ending. Um, but there are... there is a fan translation project to translate the, the original Japanese script of part 1 so that you kind of have not the altered English version, but, like, the part that goes with the other two and parts 2 and 3. Um, I don't know how far along that is. But that would definitely be pretty cool to actually play, because I, obviously I didn't play the child, didn't even know it existed, and nobody in the U.S., I guess, played <laughs> Bards 2 and 3 as a child as back then, because they never came to the U.S. I just this um, But that would be cool if they are actually available, and those games, I believe, are the last Shining Force games that were like... I think they're, they're the last Shining Force games. There was, I think Shining Wisdom is another game in the Shining series, which was sort of, it referenced those, I think. Like, I think Sarah and Kazan from Shining Force 2 also appeared in that game, so like, it's sort of loosely connected to them a little bit, but it was not one of the Shining Force games. It's connected to the plot, but it's not a tactics game. Um, so with those, that would be the, and the Shining, games after, I believe after Shining Wisdom, this, like, like, world and storyline, the, the, the games after that didn't, weren't connected to it, they were, like, in, set in a new world and storyline, and I think they were more separate from each other. So that would kind of wrap up, like, all of these. Which would be neat, you know, to have actually played all of the Shining Force games. I think there may, I'd have to check my list of all the Shining games again, I think there's another Shining Force game that, like, Existed later, but it's not connected in, in plot or anything. It's, it's like a different story. Um, it's just also text. Interestingly, there's a whole pile of these on that were for mobile, but they were Japanese only. And <laughs> whereas other stuff like a Japan only, you know, old Game Gear game or whatever, you could, you know, make a fan translation of a ROM. With mobile gaming, I feel like it's much, it's much more difficult to access all that stuff. I know there are people who do emulation of mobile games with like blue stacks and stuff, but I do think it's not as easy, is my impression. Um, so those, you know, I think all of these games specifically actually were remade for mobile in Japan. <laughs> So I'm guessing that overall the Shining series is both more famous and more popular in Japan, on the basis that all of these games were, came, were made in Japan but didn't come in the US, I guess they didn't think there'd be a market here. Which is sad, because these games are actually really fun. Like I, and this is a very old game, right? This was made in the 90s, and yet it still holds up today, you know? It's like you can play it and it's fun. There are some old games that like, you try to play them now, and they're so frustrating or like, tedious that, you know, you just like put them down again. You can't even do it. Whereas these, it's like you can play through the entire thing and enjoy it. There, obviously, there are some things that are a little more dated, but they're still very fun. So it is 
I think it is, it's a shame that they, uh, they apparently didn't achieve as much fame in the U.S. <laughs> We're almost at the end of the battle. We have run over a little, but not as much as I thought we would, honestly. We'll, I think we'll do this inside of, like, only running over by 10 minutes. It's not bad. Gradually approaching the boss. Oh, good. Okay. Boss is a new enemy. He's quite strong. Um, let's have Slade take a crack at him. Why not? Oh. <laughs> He'll eventually level up, maybe. This might kill Slade. I, <laughs> I just kind of sent him into the wall. <laughs> it's like, do your best, buddy. How close is he leveling up? Oh, no, there he is. Yeah, he already got him. Our hero Ben attack. Okay, this could actually take a while. <laughs> he's pretty tanky. And he's in a location where it's sort of hard to bring all of our fighters to bear. You know? I guess I could have baited him out a bit more, but as usual, I was a lot too patient. <laughs> Lack of patience is probably my biggest weakness. Honestly, not just in these games, but like in video games in general, I feel like I I tend to rush too much. <laughs> I'm like, I want to, you know, get on with it and play more of the game. So there are probably definitely cases where the the sure victory would come from like, a more careful approach, which I don't take. Just living life on the edge. But especially when I'm trying to record these, it's like, you know, I, I want to finish the battle in a timely manner. Uh, let's actually have Dawn stand here so he can't attack anyone, because he's an archer and he can't attack it close up. And also she can Oh cool, we got a powerful wand. I think that increases attack. I'll have to think about who you attack. You've defeated me, but you're too late. By this time, Dark Mage will have the Sword of Haja and have dealt with the ten villagers. <laughs> What's happening? Come on, we may still get there in time. What's happening? They're gonna go murder all those villagers. This is what's happening, Mayfair. Let go of them. We had a deal. Don't be a fool. Give me the sword and I'll release the villagers. No, release the villagers first. Then I'll give you the sword. So you think you can tell me what to do? Oh, I think this is the end of chapter one, this next battle. What does finish up the cutscene? You fool. Hand over the sword or die. The sword of Haja is now in the Dark Mage's possession. Oh no. Now that I have the sword, you and all the villagers will die. Wait! Fortunately, we are here to save the day. Apparently all the villagers are locked in that shed, I guess. It wasn't a very big village. Watch the Cypress army! You're not dead yet? <laughs> That's a great one. You underestimate our strength. Gram, hurry, save the villagers! I guess he just, like, locked the doors to get in there. No! <laughs> That's literally what he did. Dark Mage, we can't escape! In that case, we must destroy the Cypress army. Wasn't that your orders anyway, though? <laughs> okay. So we're gonna break here, um, and do this battle next one. I believe this is actually gonna be the end of chapter one, so uh, we blasted that pretty fast. Thank you for watching, hypothetical viewers. I hope you enjoyed that this extra long episode fighting two different battles as we rushed forward to catch up with Graham. We have finally caught up with him. Um, we're fighting the Dark Mage, who currently has the Sword of Haja in his possession, so that we can regain it and save the Tense Villagers, who Graham is currently uh, guarding in that shed. Um, so look forward to that exciting battle in the next episode of Shining Force Sword of Haja.